Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, this is going to be a little bit different today. I am going to be deflasking tissue cultures. Uh, I have a few that are here right here right now. The one that I'm going to be doing in this particular video is going to be the variegated black cardinal that I got. Um, I'll be doing separate videos for the uh, Bambino that I got. The Bambino is so cute. Look at that thing. I don't even know if you guys can see all of it. And I have another one with a variegated um, Billy Etier. When you get tissue cultures, they're going to come in one of several different packages. We're just going to jump right into it, so I'm just going right into it here. Um, sometimes they'll be in these bags, which are fine. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the bags because when they're shipping here, they kind of get bounced around a lot, and it bounces the plant lid around in there, and that's prone to damage. I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. You'll be able to, it'll be fine. The roots look strong as all get out. I, you can see the roots right there. Just absolutely strong, strong roots. Um, but when they put them in there, the, the bags are all neatly stacked up like this and the plant's standing up really perfect and it's not going to move, but when they ship it, it bounces all over the place. Uh, so that's why I'm not a huge fan of the bags and they tend to pop under pressure. Um, these are what I do prefer are these little jars that have a, a screw top that don't have that bottleneck like this one does. Like this jar has a wider neck than this one. Way wider. Um, this one is the one we're going to be uh, digging into today, but you can see I'm actually going to be trying a different method to open this bottle. That's why you see this little red line right here. This is actually thread that I'm going to light on fire. <laughs> And I'm going to heat up the glass around the outside and then plunge it into cold water to see if it'll pop just that whole half portion off of the top instead of having to get this beautiful little plant that's just absolutely stunning out of this tiny little opening. I don't know why they do that, but whatever. Um, some, sometimes they'll even come in bottles that are like full size. They look like full size olive oil bottles and they'll have like 20 of these things like laid out sideways. Like in the plant, they'll, they'll just be like laid out sideways like this. So it looks like uh, somebody did a build a ship inside of a bottle. And that's exactly how tedious it is to try and get them out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so I'm going to try and do this method that I've seen on TV, on TV, on the internet, uh, where you light, you, you soak the string in a flammable liquid like rubbing alcohol and you light it on fire and you keep turning it and it just heats up that one particular portion right there and then you plunge it into cold water and it pops it right off. But that's always used for like decorative wine bottles. I've never seen it used for tissue culture bottles. So that's going to be interesting. Um, let's jump right into this because I've been babbling enough. Um, they will come. I'm going to pull this string off so that it'll be a little easier for you guys to see. <clears throat> get this nightmare off here now um, they'll come in this little this little jar with probably plastic wrap around it every single one that I've had has had plastic wrap around here and that's just to keep the air out Let's see if I can get it uh, any prep work that I did before I started doing this was basically just scrubbing my hands because I won't be using gloves I, I'm a tactile person I need to be able to feel what I'm doing or else it's it's not going to get done right. And on top of that, you don't need gloves. Um, that's a big, that's a big point that I think a lot of people are missing is that you don't need this lab sterile environment to deflask tissue cultures. You don't need it. You need it putting the plantlet into the jar and when it's going to sit and, and, and everything has to be like autoclave sterile when you're putting the plant in here for it to sit, when you're taking it out, you're actually trying to bring it out into the environment that you want to, have the plant growing in so why would you pamper it anymore just get it out into the open work with it a little bit i mean you're not going to acclimate it out into the open but you're not going to need gloves like that just scrub your hands you're fine <laughs> this is distilled water in a pyrex cake pan i think it's like nine by 13. up it open I'm just going to let some water seep into there. This water has been sitting in here, so it is room temperature. I'm just going to let it kind of work itself out. I'm not going to touch it any more than it needs to. 
I always want to keep these jars because they're so cool. And now I have like a hundred jars that I don't do anything with. So <laughs> don't feel bad by just throwing these out. <clears throat> I wet my hands down a little bit before I handle the plant. What was really cool about this particular one is that the gel, the nutrient gel, was almost a liquid. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure that has something to do with the prep, but it was almost a liquid and it made it really easy to just slide this out. Most of the time, that's not how it works. One of the specialized tools that I use on a regular basis is this thing, this little squeeze bottle. It's not too much pressure, but it's enough pressure to blast the uh, agar off the roots. And all of this has been sitting in a room for we're sitting in the same room forever, so it's all room temperature water. That was super, super easy to get that agar off of there. That is not indicative of everybody's experience, so don't think that that's going to happen regularly. Little black roots are look like aerial roots. It's interesting. It's definitely variegated. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. So, I've never had a uh, variegated black cardinal before. That's why I'm kind of studying it and trying to figure it out and everything. So it's it's really it's really interesting to me. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do to put it in its new home for a while is I have these little humidity dome uh, potters, planters, I guess you want to call them, um, but they're for seedlings and to keep the humidity up and you can slowly by turning this little knob increase or reduce the uh, amount of open air that gets in so you can actually effectively control how much humidity is in here so what i'm going to do this is leka and i peppered it with stratum this is a new this is just something new that i'm trying because i always experiment with stuff <laughs> one little piece of stratum falls in the mix that's good um i'm always trying new things and i usually do just sphagnum moss if you don't know what that is, here's a big bowl of it right here. I usually just use sphagnum moss, but this time I'm going to use Lika in the bottom with some stratum peppered. So it gives it a, it gives the roots a little bit of a goal to work towards. <laughs> Sorry, I just smacked my mic. Um, like when the roots will grow down through the, uh, through the sphagnum moss, they'll get to the Lika and they'll start to cling on to that a little bit better than they clings onto the moss. And then it'll get to a piece of stratum and be like, oh, piece of candy. <laughs> it's like a little fertilizer ball, but not really. And I'm also um, introducing it to soil by giving it that leka and stratum bottom slowly. So the roots can kind of get used to uh, soil instead of the agar and water and everything else. When you are handling these, you really have to be gentle with them. Sometimes you'll break. I pull any leaf off of the bottom that looks yellowing. And I pull down and away, so it kind of pulls the entire uh, pulls the entire leaf off. It's hard to see. It's really hard to see. <laughs> Let me bring this closer to the camera for you guys to see. She's pretty. So, get my sphagnum moss out here. <clears throat> I wanna try and do as much as I can on camera so you guys can see. Not a lot of videos out there that actually have all the steps in here. And if I'm skipping something that you wanted to talk about a little more, or I'm not skipping, or if I'm not talking about something that you guys want to talk about a little bit more, let me know in the comments. And I will, uh, I'll go over it a little more in depth. I just kind of ball it up around the base. Not tight, just enough to hold the plant. You get a little bit more to fill up the bottom. <clears throat> and again, I'm not I'm not trying to get this too packed in there. You don't want it too packed in there. You want it. You want there to be oxygen in there. 
sphagnum moss um it's not meant for the roots to drink water directly from it's meant to create a humid environment that has oxygen as well as uh i guess it's water um humidity so that the roots can actually grow if you give it too much water it's going to be oversaturated you're not going to get the growth you want you're not going to get the the root strength that you want the roots just kind of stay as they are and just drink they're not looking for another for a better source of uh nutrients there we go i just had to put a little press down a little bit for some support so by making it the moss for um tissue cultures needs to be a little wetter than it would be for let's say rooting an elbow When you're rooting an elbow, you want to squeeze pretty much every bit of water out of the moss. This, not so much. You squeeze about half of the water out. So there it is. I'll do another one real quick for you guys. This will sit in this for... <laughs> A while until I see roots coming down the sides right here that it's going to be in this uh, it's going to be in this container until I see roots on the sides what should we do next we're not going to light that thing on fire so we're going to be doing the <laughs> the, the variegated Billy well, that'll be interesting I want to get some more moss up here so I can move on to the next step without having to reach back and grab more moss so these bags are really easy to open. Literally just cut my scissors. There they are. Quite literally just cut. about changing out water or anything it's not that big a deal just make sure the water is room temperature oh it's so pretty it's so cute hold on i'll bring it closer to the camera so let me get rid of this stuff i have a puppy sleeping behind me and i don't want to just throw stuff on the ground she'll start licking it and eating it and it's not what you want This stuff has more gel than that liquidy agar had. So this is going to require just a little bit more work. Also little pieces of dead plant material. Some, sometimes the leaves, some of the leaves will die um, in vitro. And that's okay. It's just part of the plant's life. Look at that half moon. I got a half moon. That's a pretty one. See if I can bring it up to show you guys. Pretty that little guy right there. But that doesn't mean it's going to spit out half moons the rest of its life. Doesn't mean anything. Unless I'm really, really trying to blast agar off of it, I keep it under the surface of the water so that it's not damaging anything and please keep in mind that these methods that i'm using aren't the only methods to do this they're not the right methods they're just my methods they're just what i use that has worked for me and everybody's going to get their own um method that works for them no i just broke one of the roots <laughs> that's fine though That's okay. See, that's another thing I don't like about the bags is there's not really a direction that they grow in. Once they start, once they start that shipping process, they grow in whatever direction they want because they're no longer sitting straight up underneath a light. They just kind of go everywhere, squished up against stuff. 
I'm trying to find the place to... Oh, okay, here we go. Sometimes it's just confusing and trying to find the base of the plantlet because they just get balled up into the uh, into the agar like that with the bags. I know it seems like I'm handling these a little rough, but after doing, you know, like a hundred of these, <laughs> you kind of get used to feel. The last billies that I got, man, they grew so great. They weren't variegated, but they were just, they just exploded. I need to get that root. There we go. Okay. Now it's starting to look more like an upright plant. It's going to be rough. just going to put you down into ooh sometimes this happens too ah oh, yeah please let that be true please come off with a root that'll be truly amazing sometimes they uh they have additional growth points come off and you know what that means it means you got a second plant <laughs> And that's already got that big, it's got another big, uh, let's see if I can bring it up and show you. It's got another big white root coming out of the base of it. So that's going to be another likely variegated, but not guaranteed variegated, um, Billy. That's why it looked like such a confusing mass and mess because there was a plant, an extra plant in there. I'm like, what is this? Oh. Look at you. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're good now. We're going to plant this guy. Got to pull a leaf off. I don't want to. And this one. That was damage. I don't like that. Broke that root off right on camera. <laughs> Successes and failures should be documented. Always. Okay. Look, before I, before I break this thing, let's get it going. Very pretty. Very pretty. you up but if you see what I mean when it was in the bag you can see sorry you can see the top of the plant right here but the roots are also growing in the direction of the top of the plant versus this I mean it's it's upright like this and the plant knows exactly what direction it's supposed to go it's interesting well, that's Wrap you up very gently, lest I break another root. Oh, I can't wait for you to grow up into a big one. Oh, I'm pretty excited about that. Oh, like a little baby, little baby Billy. Hopefully, the variegation continues. You never know. Easy, easy. All right. 
Well, since this is a video of deflasking, I might as well try and deflask this like a normal human being would and not try and set it on fire, right? We'll try that in another video. This is an Alocasia Bambino variegated. Uh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> and I so don't want to ruin how gorgeous it is by trying to pull it out of this tiny little thing. Uh, oh yeah, I gotta put this one in some, uh, in some moss. Forgot about you, little guy. Let's see how you grow. Teeny tiny little guy. set them off to the side. I don't have anything in here right now that would actually be a good a good container. So we're just going to put you off to the side. Here, we'll put you right here. Just chill. Just chill little homie. Beautiful. Good job. <laughs> Alright. Let's break my heart. Oh boy, I'm getting anxious just doing this. Here's some more specialized gear that I'm probably gonna use for this. Um, some bent tweezers, straight tweezers, and a one gram scoop. I'll use this to mix uh, fertilizer and stuff. Oh boy, here we go. Releasing the Pharaoh's curse right now. It smells good. Okay. This is gonna break my heart. I feel like I need to show you how immaculate it is, but it's really hard to show. Just really, really pretty roots everywhere, and there's additional little growth points that I will probably destroy doing this. And that's okay. That's okay. You will too. Just get all of the practice and everything out of the way before you start doing it on uh, expensive plants. <laughs> Go buy like 10 packs of just plain old like Florida green philodendrons and just deflask to your heart's content. Because this becomes stressful. <laughs> All right. Let's see how tough the agar is first. Oh, that's not bad. Excuse me, beautiful leaf. I don't want to hurt you. It's going better than I thought, but I just need to turn you around inside here. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to scoop all these pieces of agar out. Yes. There we go. That's a method, right? Break the agar in little pieces. Look at that. We're coming up with new ways to do this. It's like the reverse of building a ship in a bottle. Be very gentle, because the roots are going all throughout it. As I say to myself. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Couple more pieces off of here. Oh, I think we got it. I think we got this thing in one piece. I can't freaking believe I did that. One little more, one other piece over here. I think. Come on, little guy. Come on, little guy. 
Don't bend up now. <laughs> Almost. Yay! Welcome to the world. You are born. God, that thing's beautiful. I couldn't have asked that to go any better. That was, I am stunned that that went as well as it did. So now that you have a big root system, you definitely want to get the agar off of it. Agar is a growth hormone. Well, not a growth hormone. It's, it's a bunch of different hormones that, oh my God, there's freaking multiple growth points. Um, it makes everything grow. So if you don't get all of it off, any... Anything that's in your substrate, it will also help that grow. That includes mold. That includes any other weeds or anything that are in there. They're going to be competing for nutrients. Like I'm thoroughly excited at how went that, how well that went. I am very excited about that. So definitely get all of this gel off of here. And my favorite way <laughs> is to use these little blasters it works so well let me know in the comments if you guys are having a problem seeing anything and the next tissue cultures i will deflask will be up close real close you will be able to see the hangnails <laughs> oh man that is stunning Bring it up close to show you the roots and everything. I am I'm surprised that went as well as it did. I did not expect that to go that that quickly, that well. Okay, now that I'm done ooing and eyeing over what I just did cap on that you know help it live <laughs> stunned that thing is amazing there is two additional growth points on it I wonder if they're both have any variegation on them that would be interesting very carefully wrap this root ball because these roots are amazing Don't get buried, little guys. Don't get buried. Sorry, I'm being so quiet. I'm just kind of concentrating on not breaking stuff. You can understand. It is beautiful. This will have to stay. Both, All of these will have to stay in pretty much 100% humidity for quite some time. I got to find a little I got to find an uh, I got to find an additional spot for my new billy. I have an extra. That is essentially it. Um if I didn't cover anything enough or I didn't explain something well enough, definitely let me know in the comments and I will do my best to explain. Uh, I, I thank you so much for hanging out. You, you guys have no idea what it means to me. You guys being here with me and, and sharing these successes and failures. Um, thank you so much. Uh, definitely like, and subscribe if you're liking the content. Um, I am on Instagram. I am on Facebook. I uh, have my own site, uh, acronaroids.com, and I'm probably going to be doing some more tissue cultures pretty soon. I think I don't, I don't have any more coming in currently, but I do have a lot of uh, other plants coming in, and I think I'm going to do a feature presentation on a couple of them because they're really amazing. But uh, I thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.